Yeah, please do. Okay. Thank you. Very connected man, Tim Webster. All right, let's get into the conversation now with three of the people that will decide whether we end up at this double dissolution election on the uh, first weekend, the, the, the first weekend in the middle of school holidays in July, the 2nd of July. David Lionhelm is the Liberal Democrat Senator who joins me here in uh, the Sky News Centre. How are you, mate? I'm well, thank you. Good. Interview 9,000 for the day and I appreciate you doing it. Also joining us on the big screen, Ricky Muir from the Motoring Enthusiasts Party and from Team Glenn Lazarus. It'd be its captain, coach and its Senator from Queensland, Glenn Lazarus. How are you? Very well, thanks, mate. All right, Ricky, let me start with you. Um, let's imagine tomorrow you have to go in and exactly the same bill that you've seen before about the ABCC is there. Will you vote for it? Well, uh, th thanks for having me. Uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, under what's uh, occurred today, the uh, ABCC legislation is going through one way or another. If the Senate votes it down, the government will go to a double dissolution election and uh, soon after there will be um, a joint sitting and uh, the bill is likely to pass at the joint sitting. Whether you like the bill or not, at the end of the day, you can thank the Greens for that, for um, putting their self-interest ahead and allowing um, uh, Prime Minister Turnbull to um, get electoral reform through uh, in the last sitting above everything else. OK, but uh, Glenn Lazarus, I want to ask you, uh, I, I saw you on telly a bit earlier tonight saying, look, it's not personal, it's about the idea. What is wrong with the cop on the beat to go after essentially union corruption, something that has been well and truly displayed for a very long time? What's wrong with the cop? Well, I, I, uh, I've always said, you know, not, uh, unions aren't squeaky clean, but there are a lot more other industries and sectors that aren't as well, and I just don't see any reason why we need to target one sector when with a flick of a pen we could amend the, amend the bill and make it a national ICAC or equivalent to investigate all, all corruption. I just think it's uh, silly that we waste all this time on one particular sector. Why wouldn't we broaden it to, uh, to capture all uh, 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 um, uh, uh, corruption and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and deal, with, deal with the whole lot? Uh, Senator Lionhelm, what is your, do you have concerns with, with this bill? Would you vote for it if you had the chance to do it tomorrow? I, I voted for the second reading when, the, when it came up the first time. Now the second reading gets it to the point where you can then start talking about amendments. I wanted to see in particular an amendment which meant that it would sunset after a few years, so, so it would disappear because on, the, on the basis that it wouldn't be required after a number of years. There are some aspects about the bill that I don't like. Um, it reverses the onus of proof. It removes the right to remain silent, for example. They are nasty, and uh, in my libertarian world, they shouldn't be tolerated. So if we're going to have to put up with them, and I also acknowledge on the other side of the argument, you, the, the case for the bill, that the union corruption needs to be dealt with, um, there has to be a limit to that sort of thing. You can't just give away your rights little bit by little bit and expect that you're going to get them back again at some point. But given that it's the all or nothing approach from the government, are you willing to blow up a political career on those points that you've just said? Because it seems that if you simply voted for the way it is presented, then you get to be a senator for a little longer. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that that's the only option. But if that is the only option, yes, I'm prepared to blow it up. Um, I won't vote for the bill in its current form. It will have to be amended for, for at the very, very least, a sunset clause and possibly others as well. I'm, I'm out of um, be nice to the government um, bills, you know. I've run out of them. I've used them all up and, uh, and I'm, I'm out. So, uh, yeah, it, it, won't, it won't go through with my vote. Um, I do think we're going to get a double dissolution, uh, irrespective. I don't think the government really wants the bill to go through. I think it wants to mm. fight an election. Um, based on the ABCC and union corruption and the links to the a ALP and that sort of thing. I think that's what it's looking for. But, but it's this thing, you know, Senator Muir, help me out here, which is, again, are you willing to blow up your own show over the principles that you've just mentioned here? Are you out of the nice pills with the government along with Senator Lionhelm here? But it's, it's kind of interesting. The approach they've taken really is um, holding a gun to the head, um, like I've said earlier today. Um, oh, sorry, the, the government holding a gun to our head. Um, and what sort of message does that send to the government? If you threaten us with our position, uh, we'll allow you to get whatever legislation you want through. Uh, I gave them the opportunity last week twice to be able to debate the ABCC legislation, uh, but they didn't want to come to the party in relation to that. Um, so now they're saying um, they're, they're giving us the opportunity, fair and square, to be able to debate the ABCC legislation. Well, uh, that's good. Let's, let's go down that path. 
Um, but much the same as Senator Lionhelm, I actually voted for this bill, for this legislation, uh, to bypass the long committee stage and actually get into the committee of the whole in the Senate for amendments to be uh, debated. Uh, so that way we could see the uh, final outcome of the bill, whether we support it or not uh, at the end of that. Uh, I'm certainly not going to go um, uh, voting for legislation just to uh, save my position. That's uh, ludicrous and it sends a really bad message to the government. So Senator Lazarus, let's imagine for whatever reason uh, everyone wakes up tomorrow and says, you know what, bugger it, let's give the government what they want. How the hell will the parliament work if the double D threat is taken away, if a budget happens in the first week of May and you're supposed to negotiate on whatever they have in that budget? What, what happens if everyone just said yes? Well, um, it'll, like uh, everything that happens right now in my case, um, I don't vote down bills that the government puts up because they're government bills. I vote them down because I think they're rubbish. Um, I take every bill on its merits and if they're, if they're uh, able to put forward bills that I think are going to benefit all of Queensland and Queensland workers, I'm happy to vote for it. I'm not going to hold a grudge. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull uh, has made his decision. He's going to have to lie, lie in that bed. Um, I find it quite ironic that uh, this is a Prime Minister that uh, wanted to become, wants to become a republic, uh, but yet he's quite happy to go to the Queen's representative to uh, bypass the Senate and what they actually agreed to last week to uh, get his own way. So uh, he reminds me of the kid that gets tackled too hard in the footy, in the footy ground out the back. He, uh, he's spitting the dummy, he's taking his footy and he's going home. Uh, need, he needs to get on with uh, the governing of this country, which he hasn't been doing for quite a while. OK, broader issues here, which is... Um, uh yeah, Senator Lionhelm again with the wider audience here and potentially an election a hundred and something days away. What's your pitch to stay there? What have you been able to do in the time that you've been able to be in the Senate? Why should you get another shot at it? Well, um, I'm the only really genuinely principled libertarian in the parliament. So I stand for low taxes, small government, less regulation, letting people run their own lives. Uh, there are people with libertarian inclined tendencies in the, in the other parties more the Liberal than the Labor Party, although not exclusively, but they get squashed by their party. They can't do what they'd like to do and say what they'd like to say. I can do that, so I can stand up for um, less government, lower taxes. Um, and I've been doing a lot of that uh, the last two, two and a half years, actually, since the election, doing a great deal of that. I got 9.5% uh, vote in the 2013 election. Now, even if you assume that some of that was attributable to being number one on the ballot paper, people think I was the Liberal Party, whatever, whatever the reason was, that still leaves an awful lot. In a double dissolution, you only need half as many. So this idea that, a, that we're all going to lose our jobs because of a double dissolution is wrong. If we get 4 or 5 per cent, or Anthony Green says it might even be 3 point something, mm. we're still in. We're still in with a, with a show. Now, I'd like to think that at least 3 and a half, 4 and a half per cent of the population subscribes to the idea of paying less tax, yeah. for example. Yeah, well, I must say I do. Um, <laughs> Ricky Muir, uh, let's, uh, let's get into full election mode here, because bugger it, why should it be the major parties who get to do it? Um, why should you get another shot at it? Oh, I think um, my, my record, um, uh, my voting record should be something to speak of. Um, I do come from a blue collar background and I think uh, my voting record shows that, but it doesn't actually show me stuck to either ideological side of politics. There's certain things the government's have put through which I've supported. There's certain things um, uh, that I haven't supported. It doesn't mean I voted with the ALP. It just means that I wasn't necessarily uh, in agreement with it. But things like um, uh, you know, your Medicare co-payments uh, and so on, the things that really hurt people that have done it tough, I've been there. I've actually been there. I can proudly say that. I understand what that's like and uh, I can see how that's going to affect people. So yes, I understand that uh, there needs to be some kind of economic responsibility and we need to fix the budget black hole, but you don't do it by making poor people poorer. It, that, that is really bad. And so my record's been very much uh, visible in relation to that. But uh, as I'm finding my feet more and more, I'm seeing the opportunities. I've introduced a, primus, uh, a private senator's bill uh, recently in relation to uh, type 1 diabetes and uh, a health care card for life uh, for those who have type 1 diabetes uh, as a preventative health care measure to actually help bring the cost of um, hospitalisations and, and uh, medical care uh, further down the line down. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been working very uh, hard on a, um, a uh, mandatory code uh, in, uh, for, for data sharing uh, service of data sharing in relation to uh, in, in cars as they, as they become newer. Um, that there's certain codes and um, so on that actually 
uh, need to be able to be accessed uh, from the manufacturers, they're predominantly holding onto that rather tightly. Independent repairers aren't able to uh, create competition within the market and do the job that they're supposed to do. So that there's many things that I've been working on, I'd like to continue to work on, but also scrutinise the government. That's the point of the Senate. The Senate was always supposed to be a House of Review, not a rubber stamp and not a House of Opposition. I think a broad, diverse crossbench is actually a good thing for Australia. Good on you. Thank you very much, Senator. And finally to you, Senator Lazarus. Uh, you got the pitch, you got the camera, go for it. Why should you get another, th <laughs> another six years? Well, because I'm not dictated to by uh, large donators uh, like this government is at, at the moment. Um, I understand what Queenslanders want and uh, I take that message to the Parliament and hopefully get some d uh, decent outcomes for them. Like Ricky, I think the uh, Senate uh, reviews, uh, debates and then legislates and at the end of the day we keep the bastards honest and we, we hold them account and uh, they have to work hard, yes, to get bills through but at the end of the day, when they get through, um, I, I know that it will benefit uh, all Queensland and all Queensland workers. But at the moment we've got very high unemployment here in this state and we need to uh, uh, start getting some infrastructure going and we also need to look at our tourism industry, a massive industry here in Queensland and we need to uh, help that out as much as we possibly can to create even more jobs. All right, thank you very much, Senators, one and all. I look forward to talking to you all in greater detail between now and whenever the heck this election is. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, quick break. Back with more here with uh, Richo, Ross Cameron and Janine Perrett.